Michael to our reporter now. He's got an interested uh, man to talk to. Let's go to John Saracino. Thanks, Al. I'm in the dressing room uh, outside Tommy Morrison's dressing room. We can hear the punching going on in the hand pads. He's in there with Tommy Vergetz, his lead trainer. But right here I have Doug Drager, who helps Tommy Vergetz out. Tommy Vergetz once told me that Tommy Morrison had to prove to himself that he wasn't a loser. Where do you think Tommy is in that quest right now, Doug, as a fighter? I think, uh, I think he's at the peak of that right now. Uh, he knows what he has to do. He knows uh, what the cost of this fight is, not just in the money, but what it is to him personally. And I think this is the pinnacle of that. You know, Tommy hasn't always shown the most imagination for a fighter once he gets in the ring. He seems like he sometimes gets stuck in one mode and isn't able to adjust perhaps the way his corner would like to. How has he come in that department recently? <laughs> it's, uh, it's kind of amazing to ask that because we have worked on that solidly for about the last month. Uh, we have had some excellent sparring, which we have not had previously. We've had some real good sparring partners uh, getting ready for this fight, and uh, uh, he's showing a, a, a great improvement in that. And I think you'll, you'll really be able to see it tonight. Thank you, Will. Now, Razor Ruddick in the past has been a guy that doesn't want to go forward. He wants to try to counterpunch. Will that mean that Tommy will perhaps try to lull Razor to come forward so maybe he can uh, do some counterpunching of his own? Exactly. Uh, that's really kind of what the fight plan is. We're not going to fight him inside like Razor likes to fight. We're going to make Razor come to us. We're going to fight him from the outside and force him uh, to deploy. We really are. You know, Razor Ruddick's been off for a long time. Uh, I guess testing his conditioning is going to be a key thing in this fight for Tommy Morrison. I think it is. I see Razor coming out trying to establish himself, and I don't think he's going to be able to do that against Tommy, and I think when he sees that he is not just going to be able to bulldoze Tommy, then I think he's going to start losing his confidence, and uh, I think that's where it's going to pay off. That's when we're going to take it to him. Thank you, Doug Drager. Power T-shirts featuring Tommy Morrison, Razor Ruddick, plus Raw Power caps, satin jackets, and more. Operators are standing by. 1-800-344-4977. Order now. Bruce Beck with Burt Sugar still to come. Tommy Morrison and Razor Ruddick. But before we focus on the Morrison fight, Burt, Roberto Duran continues to fool. Here he was tonight. He looked much better than he did in his last fight against Pazienza. He weighed in at 167, but that was before he ate last night. I'd say he was 175 to 178 pounds. He came into the ring, and like I said, he handpicks his opponents. He gets guys that he thinks he can beat. Seven out of ten times he'll do it. Tonight he fooled him again. I don't know if he fooled him. What you got was Roberto Duran at 44, looking like he was 24. He had fun. He showed skills in getting away from punches, no matter that Ronnie Martinez, who was undefeated with 13 KOs, couldn't hit him. He had two hands. Anybody has two hands. He couldn't hit him. Roberto had a good time. He showed us a little bit of what was once the great Roberto Duran, and it might be why he can continue to bill himself as the living legend. Well, there's no way he's going to retire after a performance like this. No. He's going to keep going until something happens which is on the negative side and said so Roberto Duran comes up with the seventh round TKO victory tonight Martinez's first loss as a professional coming up Tommy Morrison against Razor Ruddick Tommy Morrison uh, let's take a look at some footage and some uh, some notable fights for Tommy Morrison George Foreman he was so good in that fight and scored a 12 round decision he was focused and he outpointed Foreman nicely. And then the next fight out, he loses to Michael Bent, knocked out in the first round. Talk about a dramatic change from one fight to the next. Now, Razor Ruddock, as far as some of the notable fights on his list, he has won against three former world champions. Michael Dokes was one of them. He lost twice to Mike Tyson. And Lennox Lewis, well, he was just terrible in that fight, knocked out in the second round. And right now, Razor Ruddock trying to get his head together for this fight against Tommy Morrison. He's weighing in at 243. That's the highest weight that he's ever come into a fight at. Against Tyson 1, he was 228. Tyson 2, 238. He's only been over 240 once before. And in the Lennox Lewis fight, he was 231. Whereas Morrison comes in at a respectable weight 
much heavier for Ray Zerudik, and that might show the ring rust and the inactivity. Well, he thought yesterday when I asked him that he was going to weigh 230. He didn't even have the discipline to know what he would step on the scales at. Uh, I, I've got to tell you, I hope that he gives a better performance in the ring than he did addressing the scales. All right, for more of the pre-fight activities, back to Al Bernstein and Dave Von Tempel. Well, thank you, Bruce. Uh, back here with Dave Bontempo. Now let's talk a little bit about some of the X's and O's in this fight, which we really haven't gotten to yet. These are two fighters who mostly bring to bear terrific left hands, especially Ray Zerudic. Will this fight be won and lost by who can land the left hook? It certainly seems that way, Alan. Of course, you've got the 16-foot ring to consider here, too, so it should be a real brawl in there. Morrison's left hook is better to the body. Ruddick's left hand is better to the head, so it also could be an upstairs-downstairs battle. Over the uh, course of years, we've seen Razor Ruddick almost frustrate all of us by not using his right hand. For a while, it was hurt, but then it was healthy, and against Mike Tyson, it almost seemed Tyson was begging to be hit with the right hand, and Ruddick didn't throw it did not pull the trigger on it. He had the height and reach advantage as well. Sometimes fighters just get too dependent on one hand, don't develop enough confidence to use the other hand in a key situation. When you do a good punch very well, like the left hook for both guys, you can go to it too often. Now the ring, we've made much of the ring so far. It is a very small ring, 16 feet. Uh, the Ruddick people saying they originally wanted 20. Who does this small ring benefit the most? It really benefits the guy who lands the first big punch and also the guy who gets tired quickly because if the guy gets tired quickly he really doesn't have to move around as much and so it becomes a matter of conditioning to see who it's going to benefactor so far it's a push at the start <laughs> that's for sure and of course razor ruddick coming in at that larger weight of 240 some pounds might indicate that perhaps he might not be as uh, in as good shape as he would like and tommy morrison has always had trouble with stamina we saw it in his last fight, a four-round fight, which he had some trouble, then came around. Tom Vergetza, whom uh, his manager, Bill Caton, praised very highly today, says that Morrison is in better shape this time, can go a little bit longer, that they learned off the last fight. We'll see how it works out. Tommy Morrison is younger. The weight is very comfortable for him there. Ruddick with not a big reach advantage, so that really shouldn't work itself out there too much. Question is, the stamina, the chin, and the hook. All right, and those numbers, as you take a look at them, give you some idea of the slight differences in these men. But bottom line is that Dave said comes down to punching power and stamina. You see they're getting ready here. And believe me, folks, whenever Tommy Morrison fights, they put together some pretty extravagant ring walks. And in this case, it's going to be for both the fighters. We've been in this building and other buildings in this state when Tony Holden and his people have put together some... Uh, some entrances for these fighters, things that would make uh, Frank Sinatra and uh, Liberace jealous, I think. It's a real treat seeing the fireworks and all the theatrics that go with the ring entrance. And the ring entrance is such a big part of the game. You know, the big fights in Las Vegas, sometimes you hear it from the crowd at the top who can see the fighters first coming out of their dressing room. The excitement builds throughout the crowd, and we're seeing it build right now. So it begins. Let's take a look as we see the entrance of Tommy Morrison and Razor Ruddick.
Was that some out-of-body experience? <laughs> there are the many, many, many fans here for Tommy Morrison. He's a very popular figure in this state, obviously, and in this part of the country. Razor Reddick comes into his lair to try and beat him. Both men in need of a victory to keep themselves in the heavyweight hunt. Championship, sanctioned by the Missouri Office of Athletics. Administrator ringside, Tim Lukenhoff. Physicians in attendance, Dr. Michael Popa and Dr. Don Shumley. The timekeeper is Gordon Neal. Counting for the knockdown seconds, Ken Terrence. This bout is also sanctioned by the Intercontinental Boxing Council, President Joseph Blackie Gennaro, Vice President Dean Shantz, and ringside supervisor, Debbie Jones. The scoring will be done on a 10-point bus system, and the three judges assigned are Gary Merritt, Larry Dickey, and Tim Figley. And when the bell rings, the man in charge of the action, referee Ron Lipton. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from Kansas City, Missouri's convention center, there's only one thing left to say. Uh... Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, wearing the white, trimmed with gold and red, and weighing in at 243 and three-quarter pounds. He comes into the ring from Coral Springs, Florida, with a professional record of 28 victories with 20 KOs to his credit against four defeats with one draw. Ladies and gentlemen, one of the biggest left hookers in the business today, he is Donovan Wearing the black, trimmed with red and white, weighing in at 227 pounds. From Jay, Oklahoma, he brings his professional record of 44 victories with only two defeats and one draw. 38 of his 44 victories are by knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, the former WBO World Heavyweight Champion, Tommy Lugu. watershed in his career and across the way Razor Ruddick the man who gave Mike Tyson two difficult bouts had a shot against Lennox Lewis that turned into disaster for him people watch even these early rounds quite closely yeah there should be explosiveness 
sometimes you see fighters with the same power styles become very cautious so they don't open up but Tommy Morrison with the exception of the George Foreman fight has always gotten in there and done major early work and remember the last time Ruddick was in any kind of a major fight several years ago was against Lennox Lewis Lewis caught him early and whacked him out early jab by Morrison. And so remember, many, yeah, so many intriguing matchups out because, you know, the old adage, don't left hook with a left hooker, but that's <laughs> the money punch for both guys. Both guys have to do it. You're right. I was going to remind people of the nice uppercut by Ruddick. Oh, there goes Morrison! <laughs> he leaves. Sure could use a 20-footer right here. He has to get the jab going, and Ruddick will try to put him away here, loading up with everything. Hey, Morrison may have to pound his way out of this, ironically enough. Ruddick doing a very nice job of blocking that left hook. What Morrison may have learned is that on the inside, Ruddick is much more dangerous, and that uppercut, that was the punch that stunned Mike Tyson on a couple of occasions. Tremendous shot. You know, you look for the left hook. You worry about the left hook and something else comes up. And we talked in the open about Ruddick not using his right hand enough. There he did. Ruddick has not thrown many punches since he knocked Morrison down. In fact, he's thrown very little. There's Morrison with the uppercut. Now, Morrison has gotten off the canvas to win before against Joe Hip, against Carl Tooth Williams, he's done it. Ruddick faked the left hook and almost landed the right hand bomb, and Morrison answers with his uppercut. So Tommy Morrison down early here in round one, but now fighting his way back and landing his share of shots. It is scheduled for 12. Almost no one thinks it will go that long, and you saw evidence why here in round one. Having a 16-foot ring with somebody bearing down on you is like being 40 foot away from the pitcher's mound and the guy's got a tremendous fastball. Ruddick just missed with that one. Morrison tried to jab and Ruddick countered with the hook. Well, based on the early results to this point, Ruddick did not parlay his knockdown. So in round one, Tommy Morrison hits the canvas. But got up. Let's listen in. Tommy forgets. Okay. Not looking too much for the left and right hand. He steps back. What a terrific uppercut that was. He got himself room, made the room, and landed a nice shot. Ruddick creates his opening here. Stepping back first to create there, and then Morrison is on the clinch. And there, before referee Ryan Lipton will get in, Ruddick creates room. Nicely done. And as we head into round two, never in a million years did Tommy Morrison's people think he would go down from any kind of right hand. No, and Ruddick hadn't shown that in other fights. And and it wasn't in a situation that Morrison had left himself open. They were tying each other up, but Ruddick was extremely quick to his credit. Tommy Morrison comes out smoking here in round two, but did not land any of those punches. Ruddick looks like he's trying to set up the one bomb. Now, the old Ruddick, before he lost to Lennox Lewis, remember, went a long way with Mike Tyson. I mean, he took some bombs from Mike Tyson. The first fight was stopped, and then he think inappropriately so, and then he went the distance in the second fight. This crowd lends some vocal support to their hero, Tommy Morrison. Ruddick lunges and misses with the hook, and Morrison didn't make him pay. Uh, Morrison was busy backing off and was happy that the punch didn't get in by Ruddick. 
That's what intimidation and early knockdown can do for you. They want Morrison to use his jab. He has not been able to get that punch on track. And Ruddick so far has done a good job blocking the Morrison hook. He's really been able to tell when Morrison is about to launch into it. The hook blocked by Morrison. Ruddick has done a nice defensive job. Good combinations by Morrison, which he is capable of at his best. Dave, it's interesting. People think Morrison's not a school fighter. He is when he uses all his tools. And sometimes the adrenaline of the crowd and his own intention to win the fight early can get him away from those styles. He boxed a masterpiece against George Foreman. And even when he's being aggressive, he can throw combinations as he did just then. As Ruddick using the jab sparingly. Razor Ruddick is not a guy that throws a lot of punches. There's the uppercut landing, but this time Morrison absorbs the punch. But he still paid for it. Oh, he hurt Ruddick with a right uppercut. Razor Ruddick got rocked by the same punch that knocked Morrison down. Lift it. Give him a standing eight count. That's bizarre. Because of the gloves on the top of the rope yeah. being used as a support. I guess. It just seemed like Morrison had a big advantage there that they took away from him. Tommy Morrison hurts Ruddick, but that counts as a knockdown would. And the IBC has a standing eight count in effect. Ironically, the knockdown gets called after the major damage had been done because of the timing. And eliminates the possibility of Morrison knocking him out. The only reason why I was critical there of Ron Lipton, who, by the way, is a very, very good referee. So in round two, it's Morrison's turn to hurt Ruddick. The title of this show was Raw Power. Now you see why. Morrison starts with the uppercut. Tremendous shot. He set Ruddick up for it, then drives it back. Now watch Ruddick's glove. He holds on to the rim for support. It's a quick call. Quick call there, but when a fighter does hold on for support, a knockdown is called. Watch the gloves of Ruddick. Big shot first by Morrison. After Ruddick hits him, he comes out. He will use his leverage the way Ruddick did in round one to get things moving. Big uppercut after he'd been showing hook, driving Ruddick back. Ruddick hangs on right there. That's the knockdown. Beautiful combination by Tommy Morrison. The hands keep. Oh, big hook by Ruddick, and he lands an uppercut. Now, remember against Ray Mercer, Morrison threw those beautiful combinations, landed the same kind of shots. Mercer just wouldn't go down. And Mercer has that titanic chin. We're into round three. Tommy Morrison and Razor Ruddick. Morrison was down in round one. Ruddick was down in round two. Who will go down in round three? Why don't these guys use the stools between rounds? Morrison has stood up after both rounds. Razor Ruddick stood up after that one. Razor Ruddick not only stood up, he took a little walk in his corner. Maybe he wanted to clear his head. <laughs> Another right uppercut by Morrison gets in. We're seeing excellent use by both fighters trying to set up their howitzer. Each knows they're taking the measure of the chin of the other one, and they're trying to set up bombs. We talked about both men they having very good left hands, but it's been the right uppercut by both men that has been the big weapon in this fight. They both came in with something to prove. Among those things was that they could withstand a big punch and come back. Ruddick against Lewis was hurt early and put out, and Morrison has been put out early, as in the Michael Bett fight, and has been knocked down by some journeyman fighters that he probably shouldn't have been knocked down by. Halfway through round three, Morrison trying to use that jab. The whole essence of this fight, no matter what time of the bout it is, is that one mistake could end it immediately. And you feel like both men are aware of it, thus the economy of punches. The well, heavyweight division is spicing up for a variety of reasons, and here we have two good heavyweights in there against each other, providing fireworks. 
is somewhere probably watching Riddick Bowe and Jorge Gonzalez who will get it on in a week or so in Las Vegas. They have the crown of Tommy, or Bowe has the crown as Tommy Morrison once held the WBO variety. Morrison using his jab more in this round. A safe shot. He can set up a punch behind there if he wants to, and if he doesn't, he can be satisfied with getting his punch home. Is Ruddick looking again for the right uppercut? Morrison went right to him, tried to tie him up, and didn't quite complete the job. Now, normally, this would be too early to say it. Even though we're only in the third round, I now say, folks, who's going to get tired? Because both men have shown some signs right here. Good left hook at the end of that round by Razor Ruddick. His best left hook in the last round or so. Try to get underneath Razor Ruddick and then go to the body as he does there. When he starts to the body and then comes up to the head with those combinations, Ruddick has a big problem with Morrison. The key for Tommy Morrison is when he camps inside of Razor Ruddick, he immediately must throw punches. Yes. In the first round, he stopped for a second, and Ruddick had that lightning knockdown with the uppercut. And if he's not going to throw on the inside, he needs to get out right away. Now, for Razor Ruddick, he has had virtually no effective punches on the outside, but there is the jab of Ruddick, which has been dormant. Well, you'd think that Ruddick would want to lure Morrison into a clinch so that he can work his way out of it, as he did in the first round, and he's just missed with a couple of opportunities. Now, this is a good chance for Ruddick if Morrison doesn't throw. Neither man willing to throw too much there. And again, there we get back to that stamina question. We did a Tommy Morrison fight against Terry Anderson recently, which Morrison looked dead after the fourth round. He won it with a body shot, but boy, he took some punishment. Now, a moment ago, Ruddick had Tommy Morrison right in front of him and did not fire the uppercut. Now he gets it in. Morrison not punching on the inside. Ruddick is. Now Morrison's punches look like he's tired. Right now, Morrison's not throwing with the same effectiveness. And normally, you see a fighter go inside to try and buy some time. But in this particular fight, that's a bad strategy for Tommy Morrison. And I'll tell you, if he gets tired against Ruddick, as he did against Anderson, he'll get knocked out, period. Yes. End of sentence, end of paragraph. And he looks tired right now, Dave. Ruddick looks like he's leaning on Morrison a little bit to try and tire him out more. Yeah, it looks like Tommy Morrison has hit the wall first. Nice body shots by Morrison. Even this amount of movement, though, in a small ring is still enough to keep Ruddick in pace. It shows you how slow Ruddick is moving. Ruddick cutting off the ring sets up the right hand. Morrison has the movement in his arsenal. Ruddick really does it. Morrison should use it. Good uppercut from Morrison. Comes back to the hook. He's got Ruddick hurt. He hurt him with the left hook. Razor Ruddick is hurt now. Good body combination by Morrison. But Ruddick is talking to him. There's 
Christian Ruddock was hurt, and then he was yelling at Morris. This is intriguing. Well, Morrison gets some good offense going after the Ruddock uppercut. For the second time in the fight, he timed a Ruddock uppercut and then comes in behind it. Here, Ruddock is extremely tired for the first time, really showing that. Morrison gets a nice left hook there, continuing to windmill. Ruddock with the wide open mouthpiece. Decides to voice his displeasure. <laughs> what drama. Tonight is interesting, folks. We're going to head into round five in a moment or two. I'm going to fight that is more intriguing even though we thought it was good. While we have this moment out, congratulations on your wedding last week, one of the finest ones I've ever been to. And oh, thank I'll you. tell you what, I never knew you could move to your left like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, these guys better keep moving. Thank you, Dave. I appreciate the uh, kudos. And right now we're watching what has turned into an interesting, even, even stylistic fight in a certain way. It really has. We've had the drama of the knockdowns, the near knockdowns. Marsden needing to move more. Ruddick trying to be opportunistic. And this fight is exactly what it was supposed to be. Two guys needing an opportunity with strong offensive skills, not the best chins, and heart, and the best execution will win this fight. Good left hook. I think Morrison was hurt by the left hook a moment ago. I believe that left hook got to him. And now he's moving and boxing as he did against George Foreman. But, oh, my, he took a big left hook. Well, they say that was low. I don't know. A point being deducted. Is there a point being taken away? Man, I, I think it's just a break where they're going to give Tommy Morrison some time if he needs it. All right, there was no point deducted. They simply said we're going to give Morrison a moment or two. And, and fighters should use all the time. Nobody does because they figure everybody's waiting on them, but shake off the effects, buy some time, and Tommy Morrison knows the longer he takes, the more people will get mad at Razor Ruddick for doing that. He should milk this. And that he is. Ruddick has begun to throw some pretty potent body punches on the last round of two. Now he is forcing Morrison back. That uppercut may have stunned Morrison. Tommy Morrison got hurt by the right hand. He couldn't bring his jab back. Ruddick is going after him. We talked about the stamina of both men. Morrison has had trouble as he's gone into later rounds. Hey, we've seen it recently uh, with Holofield Mercer, and now here, where you can have fun in a heavyweight fight. You can indeed, and this one has proved to be quite interesting. And it ain't over yet. Good right hand. Ruddick's throwing more right hands than we are accustomed to seeing him throw. And the combination punching of Morrison is not there as it was earlier. Ruddick really taking advantage of the left hook scouting report that was his. Also, he's getting closer here easily. Ruddick doesn't even have to jab his way in here. He's getting close to Tommy Morris. Morrison jabbing his eye. I don't know if he's cut over his left eye. It doesn't look like it. There's the Morrison attack to the body and then the uppercut to the head. When he uses it, he's effective. It really is fun to watch both of these guys go for the knockout, fighting as if neither one is confident that they would get the decision or that the fight will go all the way. But Ruddick landing some big shots here in this round. Just this with that uppercut, his hooks have been very good. Morrison has forgotten what works for him, that is go to the body and then throw a combination. He's unable to do that. Big hook by Ruddick, but Morrison is still there. And the point is, he shouldn't be. He should be on his bicycle right now. Big round for Razor Ruddick. Morrison with a hook at the bell and Ruddick with a hook at the bell.
Ruddick takes off here in round five. Good jab from the outside. Good hook. Hurts Morrison here. Keeps coming at him. Looking to go downstairs and then set something up. Just missed with the uppercut there as he almost held. He's trying to set up the uppercut here. Razor Ruddick trying to land the signature shot. And he can't get it home. It, the replay gives you an idea of how close he was and the opportunity he had there that he didn't take advantage of. We head into round six. It is scheduled for 12. Tommy Morrison down in the first round. Razor Ruddick a standing eight count in the second. And since then, it has been an interesting exchange of power punches with Ruddick dominating the fifth round. And we think maybe going after a tiring Tommy Morrison. What it goes to the body here, good hook. And one indication of Tommy Morrison being tired is that after Ruddick misses the left hook, Morrison cannot immediately come back. Ruddick has fought once in the last 15 months against Anthony Wade. He won in a lackluster decision performance. Before that, in 1992, he was knocked out by Lennox Lewis, and prior to that, he had two very tough fights, which he lost, but distinguished himself against Mike Tyson. We have seen almost nothing of the Tommy Morrison left hook in this pack. Ruddick, with his good left hook, has neutralized Morrison's. and got up at three. So that one was a big shot. Now we get into the subjective calls here. They're standing in. Ruddick is taking quite a pounding here late in the round. So Ron Lipton comes in, uses it, and 
a standing eight. Now, Ruddick is upset. He thought Lipton would stop the fight. He did not. But this standing eight counts as one of the knockdowns. And for Ruddick, the real heartbreak, there are only seconds remaining here, and he could not keep Tommy Morrison off. Now, here, he's buying time. There's about 20 seconds here. Ruddick doesn't have that much time to kill, but he doesn't tie Tommy Morrison up. So Moore comes in here. That big left hook snapping back the head is what did it. And whenever a fighter has his head snapped back like that, a referee will come in and stop the fight. Five seconds after that, it seemed like Ruddick was okay. But in that minute, in that time period right there, he could not keep Tommy Morrison off. And Tommy Morrison seizes the chance to take this fight. One champion, Roberto Duran, talking to a man that hopes to be another. Well, it was a dramatic fight to be sure. Dramatic ending to find out about it. Let's go to Michael Buffer. Things. Now, Ruddick is coming on. He's already got Tommy Morrison hurt, the big uppercut. But if you miss, Morrison there makes him pay with the left hook, a counter left hook. Terrific shot. Now, Ruddick is trying to shake off the effects. This here, Ruddick taking too many punches, and Tommy Morrison getting the standing eight count there. And the one, which will undoubtedly break Razor Ruddick's heart, is the end of the fight. He only needed five more seconds. He could have regrouped. So Tommy Morrison gets it done. That's exactly how he got it done. This crowd is beside itself because it's happy about the, uh, the way this thing turned out and also the fact that their man was able to come back from what looked like oblivion and get it done. And that was one of the questions Tommy Morrison wanted to answer about himself that when he got in with a big puncher could he come back one of the keys to his popularity is that he's always been able to really rise up and he did it against a very good fighter here yeah. you look at you look at happy more this tony holden the one of the promoters here for this co-promoter and they are happy that this thing turned out the way it did now for razor running let's say there was not that many complaints from him after this fight was stopped. He started to complain a little, but he and his uh, promoter, uh, Murad Muhammad, didn't go crazy in there. They didn't go nuts as they did when the, the fight was stopped against Tyson. He was very tired. He simply needed to buy a little more time and could not do that. They're bringing Tommy Morrison. We're going to have a chance to chat with him in just a little bit. But as you look at this scene in the ring and a dejected Razor Ruddick, let's say first now, what does this mean for Razor Ruddick in terms of his marketability? In a way, he may have shown something here tonight. That's not a bad way to lose a fight if you have to lose it. Explosive, as you're trying to close the show, your opponent closes you out. So for Razor Ruddick, certainly not a terrible way to go. He can come back and try to market himself and build himself back up. A bombs away knockout. Didn't do that much damage to him. Moore was on the line, perhaps, immediately to Tommy Morrison. He was 31. He is 31 years old, Razor Ruddick. You look at him, he's obviously disappointed at what happened here tonight. They say he wasn't in shape, and yet, Dave, he didn't fight like a fighter that wasn't in shape. No, he scored a good knockdown in round one. He came on. He did not appear to be breathing too heavily other than that one time. And it was a fast pace for a heavyweight fight. That has to be taken into consideration, too. Plus. With the 16-foot ring, they were forced to fight a brisker pace that perhaps both fighters would have liked. Ruddick was economical with his punches in the second, third, and fourth rounds. Came on in the in the in the fourth, in fact, and in the fifth, especially. Ruddick had a terrific line, a terrific uh, round. 
and uh, but things came to an abrupt end for him in the sixth ironically in a moment when it looked like he was going to press the attack let's send things up to our host Bruce Beck so a terrific victory for Tommy Morrison and might there be calls of Morrison Tyson in the near future Morrison improves the 45 2 and 1 at the point in the fight where he looked weakest he comes up with a left hook an unbelievable left hook that just changed the whole fight around at a time when Dave Von Temple said where is that left hook Tommy Morrison found it and it turned around the sixth round and it won the fight for him sixth round action